Hello. Is this thing on? The million dollar question. Is it working? Can anyone hear me? Well, I heard myself for a second before I uh, remembered that I have to mute it. So hopefully, hello, hopefully someone can hear me. If not, I'll just talk to the void. That's quite all right. It'd be a bit like my day job, really, because you end up uh, talking to an empty screen half the time when you're doing uh, IT training. So what do I have? Well, I just did that video about four techniques for speed painting. And I realized that I uh, didn't speed paint so much. I showed you how to do it, but I didn't actually paint tons and tons of models. So what I was thinking I could do is put it to the test and give it a little speed paint. So what I have here, if I can click on there, that is very close. That's a bit too close. Oh, that's further than I even wanted. So let's do that. Don't need a gratuitous picture of my crotch. Uh, the wrong kind of stream for that. Let's see. How's that? Is that better? Having to work out what's the opposite is possibly the most complicated thing. Apologies for making anyone seasick. So I went in the attic and from my video where I zenithly highlighted, was it 1,200 odd uh, miniatures? I thought I would grab some of them and give these bad boys a paint. So I've got a whole bunch of these. I've got a bunch of Vitrix miniatures, which are, well, these are the early, um, so the more the Republic Romans. So these aren't the guys I absolutely love, but they will do it a pinch. I was thinking maybe I could do some of those as statues. And then I've got a bunch of Zeech doodads. These guys need painted for my Age of Sigmar. And then I think I've got some heroes in here. And I think these are the heroes that's Slaughter Priest. Some kind of magey dude. And I think these are from Silver Tower. But if I'm wrong, do let me know. Some nice models. So I thought I could do some of those. And then I've also got... Let's see. Da -da -da -da. I have also got this massive box of miniatures. I mean, this is just a fraction of all those miniatures that I uh, spray painted. Superfly checking in. First time seeing you live content. I hope to learn a lot. Well, we're going to be practicing what was from the latest video. But thank you for joining. If you have etheric blue or hex ray flame or a nice blue and uh, a red that you fancy seeing me go at, we can practice any of those techniques. But these are all miniatures from... Messiah, which is a board game. And then we have... They're all so nice. I don't know if anyone else has this problem, but it's just having so many good models. But you know what? I think that's not a bad shout, actually, for what we could create our first poll on. Which technique I should use first? So which technique should I speed paint with? What have you got uh, handy there, Robert? What have you got to paint? I'm hoping everyone watching has something to paint. That's kind of the whole point of these hobby hangouts. We want to get stuff done when uh, partners, children, dogs, whatever keeps you company normally are in bed. So what do we have? Let's vote on, do we want to see um, metal statues as our technique? Um, if I hit return, will it go to the next slide? Oh, I can use tab. Metal statues, stone warriors. Um, let's add another option. Uh, what have we got? Um, red, moonlight and fire. And then of course, what the stream really promised, what it mentioned, what we're all here for, which is ghosts. Of course, we're not limited to just ghosts as actual ghosts. They will work as Spectra Warriors. But the nice thing about this is I have an absolute ton of models that we can choose from. I was thinking I've got these little 
stone guys. Uh, that's his butt. You won't be able to see much detail there. Um, these very, very angry guys. Uh, they would be perfect for the stone technique. I've got, I don't know, about 30 of those guys. I've got these cool stone crystal warriors. They might be good for maybe the blue and red. And then I've got the, uh, the centurion dudes as well. And then I've got these two cool models. I'm painting some 40k iron hands. I'm going with a brown undercoat and then soft dry brush. Very nice. Very nice. Are you going to stipple on some silver on top of that to make them all look all rusty? I'm afraid I, I don't know if I can condone your choice of army. Obviously. Obviously the Death Guard are the best. And do you know what's funny? It turns out there was actually been a, a perfect uh, Typhus model. So I actually picked them up. Someone was selling them. So I've got myself a replacement for the Lord Festus that I chopped up. Uh, and a replacement for Typhus. But I really want to do the full video on this at some point, finishing off painting it. I even managed to pick up, because they brought back the Gellerpox Infected, and they actually have little bloat flies. So I picked up a bunch of them that I can now fill in the background to complete this, which I was very pleased with. Now that'll be cool to get on the wall. What are we thinking? What do we want to see painted? Ooh, metal statues. Metal statues and ghosts. Good, good. Either of those would both be fun to do. I've also got this tiny bag. Uh, this is a, a bag of stuff <laughs> that for a friend I took uh, to paint... Uh, <laughs> They're from Joan of Arc, and I painted all the other ones, but look how blooming small they are. And yet, believe it or not, they're still bigger than my uh, Eldar army up top that I still need to paint. Too many models. We did a, a recent one on the podcast where we were talking about when is our collection no longer collecting and when does it become hoarding? I'm ashamed to say a lot of mine turned out to be hoarding. Who does the who does the Iron Hands originate with? If that makes sense, who's the, who's the the founding legion? Who's the Primarch of the Iron Hands? Is Iron Hands Portarablo? Let's see. I've got these guys, which I was going to do as these guys, which I was going to do as the statues, and then might do these weirdos as the high contrast, depending on what people decide they want to see. Stone, or maybe him ghost. Hmm. Too many models. Too little time. the vote going metal statues and ghosts still drawn very nice I'd be happy with either of those my phone just buzzed to let me know that I'm streaming which is good ah Ferris Manus yes of course iron hands because he's got the metal hands where he drowned the drake of course, I have him in this cabinet up here. However, he's neither built nor painted. But what I want to do is I want to have... I want to do basically a Primark project where I have a go at painting all the different Primarks with different paint styles. So like one with dry brush, one with uh, contrast paints only. I wonder if he'd be good for the contrast paint only run. So 
Yeah, that is one of my plans. Primark project. Okie doke. Right, let's get started then. I think the metal statues and the ghosts have drawn, so I think I'll do some of each. I think I will do... I'll start with the metro sta metal statues. If I say it with that kind of accent, it sounds like I'm saying metal cashews. Let's start with the metal cashews. Delicious. Let's take out a handful of these bad boys, so I've got some tanned. And let's get batch painting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That'll be enough to keep it going. And my ginormous box of paints. And this is where you find out if you actually bothered to put your paints away properly last time. And the answer is a resounding maybe. What have we got? We've got old gold. And then we need some kind of bolt gun metal. Fantastic. Now, I wanted to make that video because it's a video that I see a lot. People do videos where they say, hey, this is a speed paint technique, or here's a model, and they paint a single model. And I've got way too models, too many models, to take that kind of time on a single model. Let's see. Put that in there. And I need a giant gyros. Ooh, handy. There is my etheric blue for doing the oxidation for later. And then I need a black wash. Contrast paint will do nicely. Someone commented on the video, they were like, why do you keep switching between speed paints and contrast paints? Uh, because I own speed paints and contrast paints, and when one runs out, it's nice to have a backup. Keep that for the ghosts. I watched the Rising Apes uh, video. If you've not seen James's video on creating a paint rack, you should definitely give that a watch. And I'm not going to lie, I think I'm probably going to paint one right on this wall. I was originally going to have the logo, the, uh, the video logo on there. But I think actually having my paints on there, on the wall next to me, would be very handy. Because right now, all of mine are in... Little pots like this one. Tide pods. Including my brushes. And he convinced me. He was like, ah, only 30, 30 quid to do all of that. I was like, that sounds good. I've currently got out the back. I'm trying to turn... There's a, a bit of random land at the back of our house, which can't really be used for the garden. And uh, I'm trying to turn that into a car park. And I'm trying to make a gate out of pallets. So I've got like reclaimed wooden pallets that I'm trying to use. And you know what? It's working pretty well. So there you go. If I, uh, if I can make an actual gate out of it, surely, 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 I can also... make a shelf out of wooden pallets as well at least that's the hope that is the hope let's get some paint on here so first stage is just take your gold and splat it all over the model Probably with a brush that isn't quite so thick with paint. I think uh, <laughs> maybe someone didn't wash this one before they put it away. 
And when I say somebody, I mean me. What I found with contrast and speed paints is it basically sucks up into the brush. And unfortunately, if you get stuff in the ferrule of a brush, you're in trouble. And as I said in the video, don't worry about it being a little bit patchy. Because we're going to do a wash all over it and we're going to be following up with another dry brush of a slightly lighter gold. So it's just going to create some variation. If I was a real pro, I would have a little timer on the screen. So we could see how long it would take to dry brush each one of these. How long the entire paint job could take. Does anyone else have like a all over style that they use where you paint the entire model or your entire army, sorry, a particular scheme that would look good? Because that's something I'm always looking for is ideas for schemes for entire armies or my ton of unpainted models that I can get done very quickly. We did the, uh, on the last session of this, didn't we? We did the entire board game of Lord of the Rings. And that was just using dry brushing, but that wasn't using a particular technique. Just get the paint on the models as quick as possible. But I do like the sound of your, uh, your brown technique. That does sound good. A friend of mine did his death guard with all rusts he just got a nice big can of a light brown then he dipped it in what i can only describe as something that was actually initially designed for for staining wood and he stuck his models on the end of a drill and then just spun them to get all the excess off. I think it was a technique that was popular like 10 years ago. I want to say it was called dipping, but I'm not 100% sure. I couldn't help but wonder, is it not quite expensive to do it like that? Because that stuff's surely more expensive than uh, maybe even Games Workshop washers. But the models actually came out really cool. They uh, are really mottled and dirty and perfect to be Death Guard. He took a bit of orange pigments to them. And then, your all important signature eye glow. Because what are you doing if you don't have an eye glow on there? Um, I did 4,700 points of Tau in Power Rangers theme. Nice! Well, so you were like alternating the colours to get each of the different characters. Did you do it by squad or by person? I did a video where uh, I spray painted 200 of them, like nothing but spray painting. And it was about 200 models in just a couple of hours. But that's because uh, it was really windy outside. There's no reason you can't just spray paint Tau. Works great. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Also, can you imagine doing <laughs> any kind of dry brushing or anything on those smooth vehicles? I, of course, went Farsight. What, uh, what enclave were your Tau? I have to say, I much prefer the new white scheme to the old ochre scheme. But, of course, red's for the win. Welcome to anyone joining us. We are getting our models painted. Specifically, I am trying out the four different techniques that I showed off in the most recent video. We had a little vote currently ongoing 
And it's a draw between ghosts and metal statues. So I've started off with metro statues. I have an entire army of these early, early legionaries from Victrix miniatures that I want done. I've got an entire army of these unbuilt, because of course I do, but they're of the later stages. So the, the more, what I could consider, and uh, what probably Hollywood consider, traditional legionaries. And those bad boys are going to get the respect they deserve. However, these support, these cannon fodder, ach, they can be statues. Do you know what? They probably would have made quite good terracotta warriors. Who knows what army we might be getting in the latest iteration of the old world. Did everyone see the fact that they've announced, uh, they released a bunch of pictures for Bretonians for the old world coming back in the Warhammer community. That was cool. I was thinking the other day I'd quite like to paint some knights. They're the kind of models that everyone had from the old Warhammer fantasy starter kit. Um, my first kit was the Lizardmen versus the Bretonians. And I had the Lizardmen, my brother had the Bretonians. And so we never painted the Bretonians with any kind of, you know, heraldry and stuff like that. So I thought that would be cool. So you know what? If they do bring it back, sounds good to me. Bring it back and I'll get you some Bretonians. Um, Farsight as well. Good, good. I've been listening to the new Farsight, or it's probably not new, the audiobook. And it's very good. <laughs> It makes you really, really dislike the ethereals. However, I can't help but feel it's kind of sad. It feels like Games Workshop's almost given in to the hate on Tau. And so instead of them being good guys, they've now decided, you know what, we're going to make ethereals evil and self-centered. Which will then mean that Tau themselves are no longer the goody two-shoes of the galaxy. Hello, Kevin. Welcome. We're currently painting... Iron Hands, I am painting some Roman Legionaries. What have you got to paint? And apologies, there was so much of a gap. It was easier to just make sure that I had everything sorted so that I could come back permanently, including, if you didn't notice, the podcast is now being moved to a Sunday, so I can do this every week to make my stuff done. But hello, good to see you back. Remember, the Discord is always there, so if people want to post in any pictures that they're doing please do it's not a discord that you need to go oh no not another community where i have to post tons of stuff it's literally just it was the easiest way i could think to share photos as we do this although you can still more than welcome to tag me on instagram once you've painted something i would love to see it yes indeed because otherwise what was happening is we were not taking any breaks for ourselves and basically both of us were getting tired having to watch baby every night so this is my sanctum and i figured well if i'm live streaming i definitely can't waste it by doing something that i'm gonna regret later like video games i love video games don't get me wrong but after playing it an entire night i then just regret having not done anything and my models every time i go in the loft judge me Oh, I wish I'd got some photos now to show you guys because uh, I've done a whole ton to the loft. I now have windows in the loft. I now have insulation in the loft and I've started doing the metal slats. So that's up. I've started the prep for doing the repairing the brick wall, um, which is going to be the backdrop when I'm recording that way. And I've also started sanding down the beam where all the names uh, from the legendary brushes are going to be so that's pretty exciting i just need to work out a way of getting people's names on the wall without ha needing to hand paint it which is uh if any of you have any thoughts on that how i can get people's names so i can just put them on the the nice wood beam i was thinking of cricket but i don't have a cricket so if anyone has suggestions please do boom 10 in the first coat of gold Let's grab the next 10. 
I've also, in theory, got this going on Twitch. However, I have absolutely no idea how I could monitor both. <laughs> it was hard enough already working out how to get it both running on both. So if anyone's watching on Twitch, hello. <laughs> Apologies. <laughs> I haven't worked out how to see the chat. So at some point, if I can work out that, I will check the chat and if anyone's posted in uh, Twitch. I was hoping that maybe it would have made a noise so I'd be able to tell. Wow, there's 10 of you. Hello, hello. Please don't be shy. Say hello. We are all here to get miniatures painted. So if you're doing something, please don't be shy and do feel free to post pictures into the door scored. Um, is the link below? Yes, it is. Oh, look at that. I am ever so slightly prepared. Ever so slightly. Uh, I tried using the Discord link, but it kicks me to my Discord. Do you have a Discord? Can I join your Discord? If you post pictures of your miniatures, I will love, quite happily come and join your Discord. Um, how would I check the Discord? Link. try it here. So if I click on join the discord invite has expired you are absolutely correct let me I thought I set it to never expire but let me go and pop this in. Like I said don't get too excited it's literally just a place where you can post your pictures to show everyone uh, so you don't need to stress about hey am I posting in another um another discord community it is literally a discord community just to post pictures that you're working on <laughs> it has a whole two channels <laughs> and at some point if i can work it out i will even have it so people will be able to join in the chat so you'll literally be able to talk live so you don't have to just put inside of there because i would love to chat to you at the same time um, hidden, use copy button. No, I want an uh, expire after. There we go. Never. So now I need to go here. Edit. And no, 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 I didn't mean that. Ah, no. <laughs> Apologies if the stream disconnects for a second. There we go. And then if I save that. And it should now have updated. Maybe. It should end in a an MY. Has that update? It has! Fantastic. Cool. So if you could give it another go, uh, Robert. Do you go by Rob or Robert? Do let me know. Uh, but I've pasted it in there. And it should now be a forever link. Hello, Cal. Nice to have you with us. I hope you've got some stuff to hobby. If not, go get it. I don't believe you. If you say you've got nothing to paint or build, I don't believe you. Right, let's get some more Romans out. These were one of the ones where we've all done it. You've gone on eBay, whatever your preferred site is, and someone was selling these, 50 of these, for 30 quid. <laughs> I was like, I'll have those. My plan is to use them as conscripts and you use the late Roman legionaries as my actual legionaries. So if you've got good games that you think uh, legionaries would sneak into, let me know, because these are Vitric models. I had no particular thought of what I'm going to use them for, apart from I always wanted a Roman army. And I 
have no impulse control. It's been really nice as well. I don't know if any of you guys were the ones that left the, the messages. Uh, we've had a couple of people reach out after the podcast uh, to just say how unexpectedly they were caught out emotionally by the podcast, which, uh, to be fair, both Matt and I were... Um, well, we had to face some cold, hard truths about our collections or <laughs> the fact that they're not collections and they may or may not be hoarding. Hmm. Spoiler, if you haven't listened to the episode yet. Basically, if you find yourself trying to defend your collection too much, <laughs> you're hoarding. Or if it stops being fun, it's hoarding. We came down to the idea of... Um, uh, <laughs> Basically, if it makes you feel bad, it's probably hoarding. Right, let's put these guys somewhere I can reach them. Sorry, guys, you're going in there. <laughs> it's also hoarding if you have to push this all in. <laughs> I once... My, my friend really called me out once because I arrived to play a game... I want to point this out that this is when I was younger. Uh, not that much younger. Um, and I turned up with my army in a plastic bag. I was that kind of person. Which is another symptom of hoarding if you're not emotionally attached to your models. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Next ten. And by the time I've finished all of these with the great gold, hopefully I'll be able to go back to the beginning. Um... It was fine, thanks for asking. Fantastic! It depends if I'm giving you in trouble. If you don't give us an update on your uh, iron hands, uh, I might call you by your full name. <laughs> uh, Kim says, I only think hoarding is an issue if it detracts from something else. If it detracts from something else. I, that could be interpreted in so many ways that it's a pretty good answer. It's like a Schrodinger's answer. Not that it's both right and wrong, but it both means something and doesn't. So if it means that you have too much room, and if uh, if it starts to impinge on that room, then it's considered hoarding. Okay, I, I can see that. I can see that. This is a bit bright. I had a breakthrough in my latest video. I don't know if you noticed about the lighting. But it turns out I was trying to do too much lighting and my camera couldn't actually handle it. So that was a cool revelation. Um, Cal, um, well, I've got too many miniatures, but I've been gaming collecting for 45 years. Too many painted models? Too many unpainted ones? You can go get it. Um, Rob has joined. Fantastic. Let's have a look at... I don't even have the Discord open. Well done, Sam. Cut me some slack. Next week will be slick. Next week will be slick. This week is uh, <laughs> working everything out. And here we go. Oh, very cool. That's your Tau. Very nice. Um, for anyone that... Uh, if you're not looking in the Discord, we have a really cool... Riptide in blue with bronze highlights. Very nice. And then we also have Storm Surge. That's it. Although, did you know that Storm Surge has gone well up in value? You know, that's the wonderful thing is, is see if you support your army through its down times, it will pay off later because your Storm Surge is now worth more than what you paid for it, unless you only bought it recently. Cal says, finally, another step in my 12-step program is complete. <laughs> this is not an excuse to skive. This is an excuse to do hard work. Hard graft. Right, next 10. Got to pick up the pace. All my, middle, my minis are sorted now. I got no excuse. If I can have all 50 done, I will be incredibly pleased. Although I'm not including basing. 50 miniatures in a single night. That'd be amazing. Do you guys count board game models in your pile? Sorry, sorry. We don't call it a pile of shame, do we? 
or a backlog. We we call it uh, what is it we call it? Uh, no works in progress. Um, shelf of opportunity, I think it was coined. Uh, speaking of um, uh, massive voodoo, his name I've forgotten. Um, he started a YouTube channel. So if you haven't done it, uh, give uh, it a little YouTube look for massive voodoo. Uh, Roman Lapot, that was it. Roman Lapot, and he's done a whole bunch of videos on painting positivity. Um, and, uh, you know, techniques on, you know, his stuff and his point of view on the Golden Demon was his latest video that just came out. It was really good. It's worth a watch. Really nice guy. I remember when, you know, before... I remember. Okay, Grandad. Um, I remember back in the day when his website was, like, the best source. You know, this is back in broadband dial-up and his website was the best source for any type of uh, painting guides invalid link can you post a link in the discord uh, let's try again I thought I'd set it to be unlimited If I post this in the chat, does that work? Can you get it from the chat? Um, I thought I'd set it to unlimited uses. Uh, invite people. Edit the link link. It should be that it never expires and it should be set to no limit. So it should still be working. Let me know if it's not. And it should be set to auto, uh, auto approve. Let me know if it still isn't working and I will create another one. These models, when I got them from eBay, were sprayed all red, which is actually something similar I did to my Lannisters. But I found that actually, unless you're going for red armor, it didn't actually save much time. Upstairs, I have an army. Hello, 14 people. Hello, hello. Don't be shy. Say hello. <laughs> I have a feeling that we probably play very similar ones, Rob. Um, so Rob says, what armies do you play in 40k? I play Tau, Iron Hands, and I'm going to say Death Corpse of Krieg. So you've got a fetish for shovels. <laughs> uh, I have a Death Guard army, and I have a Tau army in my mains. Um, I have Orcs, um, of which one made a random cameo in the previous video. And it's an entire army of nothing but vehicles. So I have a whole bunch of just orcs, wagons. Um, I've got the minimum number of, what is it, like eight, eight Gretchen that you have to have to uh, allow, you know, to make it a legal army. Um, and apart from that, just tons of vehicles. And it's great. I find that myself, I think we all have that sort of stage where you get out the hobby for a while. And I'm at that stage where I'm just rebuying everything that I lost. Don't sell your models. Definitely something I would say to my younger self. Don't do it. The money you get when you sell me miniatures is worth nothing. And eventually someone will want to play it. Oh, and I've also got uh, some random models such as... The Gaunt's Ghosts, and I'm going to make them into a little uh, pitch frame diorama, like the Death Guard one, which I guess I'll probably do a stream of painting that, maybe next week. Next week's video is all about how to 
build miniatures 101 so it covers everything like pinning magnetizing gluing um and it ended up being much much longer to record and edit so i was really hoping to get it done for today i'm also doing uh premieres so thank you very much uh there was a couple of people uh, joined to watch the premiere that was really cool to be able to chat about it <laughs> i want to post up I, sh I could probably put it in the discord uh, there's a video where it shows the aftermath of where after Claire's thrown the sprues at me from the beginning of the video uh, and dropped the giant box on me, I accidentally knelt on one of the sprues and it shredded my leg. It's now three weeks later and my leg is still not healed. It has such deep cuts in it. So yeah, don't kneel on sprues. It's a really bad idea. It's not good for your health. Fantastic, Cal. See, you've joined. Perfect. I'm in, but I can't see anything on there. Hello. Welcome. I put a message in there. Hopefully you can see that. I've waved at you. You have a cool little plant icon. I'm new here. Say hi. Oh, very cool. Um, Kevin, I might get booed out, but all I paint is board game miniatures. I haven't found a game system I want to commit into for wargaming. Not at all. I mean, I would say a lot of people probably don't actually paint their, um, they don't paint their board game miniatures, which to be honest, I kind of envy them. Matt from the podcast, he has the opinion of you don't need to paint them. And I wish, I kind of wish that I hadn't spray painted the ones that were multicolored because I kind of see his point. However, I do count them as my backlog. I have the Mythic Pantheon models, and I've painted at least half of them, all the monsters um, and some of the cool heroes. But I haven't done all of the, the boring foot sloggers yet. And that weighs on my mind. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. No, no joke, like 200 models and that's it. It also has a model I'm really excited to paint, which is uh, Dionysus who's the god of wine and excess. He's the god of tits of wine. He's the god that Tyrion from Game of Thrones wished it existed. And I really look forward to painting him because he's a big, fat, swollen model. Um, which, frankly, it could have been just based on me if I was uh, you know, wearing nothing but my birthday suit. And I have painted so many sexy men and women models, it'll be nice to paint a realistic model. If I had a 3D printer, you can bet your bottom dollar I'd print models like that. Probably why I play Death Guard. Uh, I can see the Discord now. Fantastic. Let's have a little look. Um, at the end of the, the stream, I'll probably, if I can work out the magic, share it so I can show everyone on the stream what everyone's talking about. Obviously, you can also join the Discord and you can see it. Very cool. Some Ubermen. Is this from like Ubermen? Ubermen. Is it from Fallout? They kind of look like they could come from the Fallout world. Like they're super mutants. Oh, he's carrying the front of a car. That's hilarious. I love the red. It's something I've always wanted to do. It's like orcs and red. There was a Golden Demon winner once that did their... Um, the new orcs, whatever they're called. What are they called? Uruks. You know, the big chonky boys. They did them in red and they looked so good. I really like the colour scheme. Although if you show that to uh, Miniac, you know what he'll say. That base rim. It's not a black base rim. I have no particular opinions about base rims. I really like it. You know when the base rim where the paint like slightly goes over and so it, it's not coated but it just comes around the edge a little bit. I like that. Although in the video about building miniatures I uh, also advocated for surrounding the base in some masking tape but that was more for other people so they know that it's a technique. But yeah, they're cool. I don't know where the Uberman is from. But let me know. Are they from Fallout? And Legionary 20. First coat of gold. What time are we on? 
we are on. Okay, nearly an hour. Mm. Pick up the pace, Sam. Those are rookie numbers. If you got any hope in getting these done by the end. So we need the gold. We need the black wash. We need the highlight of gold. We need the dry brush of silver. And then we need the oxidation. Still doable. Still doable. One, two, three, four, five, two, three, two. Uh, if anyone does have Discord, uh, not Discord, sorry. If anyone does have Twitch and can spare a second to have a look and see that if any of this is actually appearing on Twitch, <laughs> it would be appreciated. But like I said, that uh, working out if that's working is for the future, not for now. Although, again, if you are on Twitch just now, apologies. I don't know if I have these guys. The guy I'm copying handy, I don't think I do. Maybe in here. Someone pointed out to me the other day, they asked why I had a bathroom cabinet on the wall. I didn't know it was a bathroom cabinet at the time they bought it. Yes, so this is the paint scheme I'm going for. Gulvar. So he's got silvers, golds much less reflective than the video is making about to be that is the goal the oxidation stuff this contrast etheric blue it dries to such a lovely shade i need to put on instagram as well the arena wreck stuff i got back from my friend the burning brush he did an absolutely glorious jo uh, job on it Oh, yes, it's on Twitch. Ah, oh, thank you for looking for Rob. Um, oh, and thank you for looking, Kevin. Cool. Uh, I can see the Discord post a few. Perfect. Uh, from Arch Studios, last Kickstarter delivery from Rampant City Defenders box set is available now. Do you sell it? <laughs> if you sell it, do feel free to promote it. You're more than welcome to. But that was a good sales pitch. I liked it. It is available now. Archon Studios. Archon. Why does that sound familiar? Let's have a look. Why is Archon Studios familiar? Archon Studios. Ah, they do the Masters of the Universe. Yes. Those are some nice models. Archon is the essence of innovation and technological progress in the board game market. Through proprietary and unique soldiers, we produce the best in high-quality and detailed gaming miniatures. Made possible by Unicast, a plastic casting technology, they'll bring board game models to the next level. Unicast allows us to create models that require no assembly as they are. Cast by default as a single piece, allowing games to be played immediately on opening. There you go, that's my sales pitch. So if you do work for them, there's your, there's your, uh, your free advertisement. Dungeons and Lasers. Ah, they do the Wolfstein game as well. God, did any of you play Heroes and Might and Magic, the video game? That was such a good game. Oh, it's not actually out yet. They're doing a Heroes of Might and Magic board game coming out on the 15th of November. You can follow the Kickstarter. Oh, that's... C no, no, Sam. No. Walk away. Walk away. I'll put it in the chat so if anyone wants to go and check it out, <laughs> you won't thank me for it because it does look very cool.
<laughs> that was another uh, that was another topic a couple of weeks ago for the podcast. Still happening, by the way. Just streaming on a, a Sunday instead, because then I can do this. If you've got any ideas for the podcast, you know, topics that you'd like to hear two people with absolutely no qualifications about talking about anything talking about, we do like a good argument. Do let me know. I believe, in fact, I think it was Kevin I shouted out in one of my videos because you gave me a cool idea for uh, for the um, the podcast. Uh, fantastic. Thank you, Cal. I'm currently working with a, a 3D modeler and I'm trying desperately to get one of the products made that we discussed about on the on the podcast. Basically what it is, it's this little um it's a circular plinth that you put your model into um and it has a hole in it for putting in a pen or a paintbrush so i was thinking that people would use it with you know like the the big permanent marker felt pens that give really nice black finish and basically you put it in the side and it has a little turny bit it's just a little crank and you turn it and the model just brushes against the pen uh it's not working quite yet the problem is is the pen nibs they're not quite big enough so whilst they would do a model plinth this size they're not doing like Let's face it, you're kind of aiming for Warhammer size, 20, 20 mil or whatever it is. So that's that's what we're currently troubling with. But it has promised. The guy's done a really good job. And I'm hoping there will be an STL file I'll be able to just give away. Because um, I hate doing the base rims. And I figured, well, if I hate it, someone else might hate it. So if we can get that going, that'd be awesome. Ah, mini quest if you've not checked out uh sergey's channel do check him out he's doing some really cool stuff his latest video was an absolute inspiration all about creating donkey kong models uh, by paying fiverr artists to do it it's a complete guide so if you want to know how to order on from fiverr commissioning and then more importantly sending feedback which i think for anyone that you know, doesn't have to deal with confrontation at work. It was a really good guide for that. So thanks for making that. It inspired me. I even hired an editor following your instructions. Although that video is not done either. <laughs> but thanks for dropping by. Have a good sleep over in Germany. I'm only a hobbyist that buys their stuff. Great terrain too. I'll post some. Yes, please do. I had the the toy with the the big cat expert. Know all the names. The big green cat. It was ginormous. I feel like it was like this big. Oh, the, the next video is just the, the miniature one. The, it's the video after that, the one I was telling you about with the audio. Um, so my favorite audio books to listen to while I hobby. Um, and basically, I, I just... Uh, I, I wanted to see like how much time and stress it would save by hiring someone to edit that video because I have no idea how to make the screen part of it interesting. So I basically gave him a, a ton of uh, footage of me talking about my favourite audiobooks and a bunch of pictures. And uh, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. If it goes terribly, I'm blaming your instructional video. So everyone go over to that video and make sure you judge them. I wonder if they'll ever do... If they've done Masters of the Universe, do you think they, they might also do Thundercats? Feels like it would lend itself. Thundercats! Ho! Oh, schnarf! 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 That's right! My 
my uh, delegates today for the course uh, at work. Uh, <laughs> they were uh, they were being very 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 quiet. Um, it was one of those courses where basically you're just looking at blank screens uh, as you're training them. <laughs> and so I, we came back from lunch and nobody was replying to my uh, questions to see if people were back. So as I said, okay, I'm going to do the rest of the course as um, Gollum, uh, stupid fat hobbit, wanted to learn Power BI. Uh, and I had him arguing with um, Lisa Jaja Binks. Oh, how rude. <laughs> Very quickly, the unmuted went, we're back, we're back. Maybe I should paint Star Wars Legion and do it all to the voice of Jar Jar Binks. How would that be? Uh, I dropped in some D&D &D minis on the Discord. Anyone else use Base Ready Mix? Who's that by? Who uh, makes the Base Ready Mix? Let's have a look. Oh, wow. Jeez, there's loads of cool models. Where have all these cool models come from? Discord, you've betrayed me. Why are you making no noise? Uh, so Rob's post up some awesome vid uh, pictures. I'll uh, I'll put them all screen on later. And these are all from the Master of the Universe. Wait, hang on a minute. Am I getting confused between... The D&D models. Yes, right. That makes more sense. They are cool. There's Treeman. There's Ettins. There's three-headed orcs. Then Etten's a two-headed giant, and what on earth is a three-headed one? Oh, hang on a minute. I recognise that big boy. You're a mountain giant. That I saw that on um, Critical Role. Very nice. Yes, Cal, you've just posted up the, the picture from the Master Universe. I recognise that. That is a really nice green. Love the way you've done that wall. If you mean the base ready mix from Element Games, I've tried that. It's really good. It's just a mix of greens and greys and stuff. That's really good. Costs like three quid on Element Games. Always worth. You can just dip it in PVA, but do let us know. Is the base ready the Geek Gaming scenic stuff? Do you know what? I haven't ordered from Geek Gaming. Uh, Geek, Geek Base Gaming. It looks like it has loads of cool stuff. I met him at a convention, and he was really nice. Look, look, APS. Yeah, <laughs> he's um, salt of the earth. He's exactly what he seems like on the video, <laughs> but with more swearing. Kevin <laughs> uh, says, "Have you watched the Rings of Power?" We have. We are on the last episode. I wouldn't obviously spoil it for anyone. Uh, the, I'm in a lot of Lord of the Rings groups because I've absolutely fallen in love with the game. I plan on going to... There's a, um, there's a big, big tournament. Oh, it's not in Leeds. Why was I about to say it's in Leeds? It's not. It's down near Nottingham, but not in Nottingham. Sort of to the left of Nottingham. It's a £50 entry uh, for full weekend gaming. And the first prize is a Smaug. And we have been playing the heck out of Lord of the Rings in preparation. And I have to say, in those groups, there's a lot of negativity about it. But I'm looking at it and I'm going, I want some of those Numenorians. If you've not seen it, even if you've got no intention of watching Rings of Power, um, I would Google the Numenorians and just look at how cool they look. One of the characters, though, when uh, they're riding in, he's riding with the Numenorians again. If you know who I'm talking about, great. Uh, I won't spoil it for anyone that hasn't. But he's wearing his red armor. And do you not think he looks so much like Dracula? Like, I would absolutely... I mean, he even his name suggests it. But I would not... I would say he looked more like Dracula than maybe uh, Dracula did in the remake. The recent remake. Um, you can make your own base ready mix. But there are people who make it. For example, Geek Gaming Scenics has a great line. Lovely. If you want to see what those look like, Rob has pasted some lovely miniatures in the chat.
They're really nice. Do you play D&D? I know that seems like a daft question since you've got some lovely D&D models, but you might just enjoy collecting cool models. I'm in California. That would make it expensive. There are definitely some gaming companies where um, obviously being in America helps. But being a fan of Games Workshop <laughs> and living in the UK definitely pays dividends. It's a horribly unfair world. Ah, oh, Rob's in Washington State. What time is it there? It's 8 o'clock now. We occasionally do training for Americans. And it's quite cool because I get to basically start work at 1 p.m. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I had a, a lady on my course um, a little while ago, but she was doing a, a UK course because her company is UK. <laughs> and it was 4 a.m. for her when we started the course. <laughs> I, I cannot imagine doing that. Um, uh, the wall is blue, though. It's blue? And yet it looks a lovely green colour to my eyes. What a way to find out you're colourblind. No, I don't think I am colourblind. The one at the back? No? Is it? Is it blue? You're blowing my mind, man. Sam, are you in Ireland? I am not. I am in Manchester. Although my, uh, my grandparents are Irish. So that might be where you're getting the accent from. Manchester, so um, the time just now is 8 something? 8.30. So the stream started for me at uh, 7.30. But of course, we follow the dumb, dumb thing of daylight savings. And so actually UTC time, we started at 6.30. But here at 7.30. But yeah, I play D&D &D ever since second edition. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. I painted for Instagram um, a model my dad had given me from the original Monsters set. Not the D&D &D one. The Citadel Miniatures one. The Hobgoblin from it. I posted that up a while ago. <laughs> Have you been playing from 2nd edition? You definitely had lead models. How much do you think that's knocked off your age, do you think? 12.30? <laughs> On a school night? Hardcore. What, a 30 year old man can't refer to it as a school night. <laughs> well, everyone else watching, please don't be shy. Please do let us know what you're up to. What are you painting? It's just good to know that someone else is doing something, you know? Uh, with uh, Sergey, who popped in earlier, I, I have a WhatsApp chat, and this is mainly, you know, to make sure that we get our YouTube stuff done. But it's literally called "Getting Shit Done," where we send each other a message saying what shit we got done and demanding the other person gives an update. And it's <laughs> it's uh, definitely helped keep the motivation going. Whenever I've done really well for weight loss, it's been for a similar thing. It's uh, having, not accountability, but competition. And in this case, just company to get um, stuff done. I mean, if you guys want to make it a competition about who can paint the most miniatures within the set time, I am absolutely down for that. But I'll uh, give you more warning for next time. If you did watch the latest video, which was your uh, your favourite scheme? Did you like the, the metal statues on Gulvar? Did you like the uh, the fire and ice on the Ringwraith? Who came out really well, um, if I don't say so myself. Then there was the stone for the stone troll. And of course there was the ghost. 
The ghost was ridiculous. It was just three colors. Two washes and a dry brush. And I was like, you know what? Love it. I wanted to be painting Ankh. That was my initial plan with the ghosts. But <laughs> then I remembered a few minutes before the stream that I have loaned my Ankh. Uh, that's the cool me or not game about Egyptian gods. I loaned that out to a friend. So I didn't have Ankh to show everyone. I was going to do the, all of the models from the dead faction, all those ghosts. I would have also done my, for the Kings of War Armada, I would have also done my ships for them. For what are ostensibly Tomb Kings. Did anyone see the update for the announcement, the teaser? For all the Patronian stuff. That looks so good. And if you sold your uh, old hammer thinking you would never get to play with it. It was all a ploy. They got us to sell our armies so that we would have to rebuy them. Genius. Genius from a sneaky point of view. So the confusing thing is my mum lived her entire life in Scotland, but her parents both had strong English posh accents. My dad, his parents are Irish, but he lived his entire life in the east end of Glasgow, which gave him a really, really thick Glaswegian accent. <laughs> so my accent's doomed. My wife is from Essex. And we live in Manchester, so I have no idea how all he's going to sound. Although right now it's six months, he sounds like... Bah! That was the dream. If you could have a kid that was a quarter of each. We'd finally have someone worth following in the Prime Minister. Sorry. Apologies if there are any actual Irish people listening. I could do an Irish accent if you wanted to. I'm not suggesting that it would be good. Well, what we're going to know now is we're going to paint the rest of our Roman legionaries. And what we want to do is you want to dry brush over some gold. <laughs> nope. Never doing that again. <laughs> How to how to in, <laughs> insult the entire country really quickly. Let me grab it. Uh, mini quest sixty four. Mini quest sixty four. There we go. Go. I've popped it in the chat. It's hundred percent Scottish to my ears, but hey, I'm also Scottish, and we have a Scottish sense for each other. <laughs> well, as a fellow Scot, thank you for not referring to me uh, in the chat with the word that we all know Scottish people use to refer to each other. <laughs> I don't have a moderator. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what, if it would block the word. <laughs> right. Done. Lovely. It's not going well on the shield, is it? Like, why does that... It's like it slides off of it weird <laughs> I mean that's a good one as well I was thinking of the other one uh, that in England is absolutely horrifying and the problem is is you normally refer to your friends uh, using a particular let's say the third letter of the alphabet and uh, yeah and of course in uh, Scotland that's just a casual greeting that means that person <laughs> in England though it is a 
terrible, terrible word that you should never, ever say. Um, that was right up there with uh, finding out that potato fritters here are called scallops. So if you go in, you ask for that. When I lived in Carlisle, I remember the first time I went for uh, a fish and chips. I said uh, I paid for uh, a sausage supper. And the lady at the till obviously knew what a sausage supper was. Um, so she took the money, charged me for it. The guy behind the till was Polish. And he gave me a single sausage. And I was like, where's my chips and beans, mate? Or my chips and curry sauce? And he was like, you wanted sausage supper. There's your sausage supper. And the woman was like, no, 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 no. it means chips and curry sauce or chips and beans <laughs> so that was good she knew she knew that i paid for the right thing although i was finding out so much i absolutely loved having an american in the course it turns out you know how you always see these things where you know people are making fun of americans how little they know i know nothing about america because the, the lady on the course was telling me all about uh things in america that i didn't realize for example she was saying that um she lived for a little while in the UK, and she was like, tea? Not a thing in America. Like, I knew that people make fun of the uh, the British, you know, because of the whole tea tax um, and whatnot. But I didn't realise you just don't drink tea. Like, you just, you just don't drink tea. How do you not drink tea? It was, that was mad. Unless, of course, that was just where she's from. Um, America is a big place. So, yeah, they were like, yeah, we, do, we just we just don't drink tea. Ah, uh, yes, I'll see you next Tuesday. Yes. No. Bad. <laughs> Always a favourite. My friend was hor My wife was horrified when she first met my family. I'm guessing she's not Scottish. Need a way of having the Discord up all the time so I can see everyone's paint jobs. Have any of you seen the video by Ten Hundred, where they did like the biggest YouTuber uh, art collab ever, and they basically made a cool painting and then sold it for charity. He's doing the second season now. So if you've not seen the first season, you might have seen the second. Did any of you watch that? Also had the social supper thing happen to me as well. Also in England now. Do you also have an issue that all carbonated drinks you call juice? I know. What? And don't get me started on the school system. What's going on there? You start your year in January, not in August. Yeah, if you haven't seen it, Ten Hundred's a cool guy. He does um, uh, murals. He produces, and now he's produced his own miniature. It's really cool. And he's basically, he sends the portrait to other artists. Um, and then they do something on the canvas. And then it gets sent to someone else. And uh, it gets sent all around until it's full. And then that is sold for charity so it's a really cool idea and i haven't seen anyone do something similar in the miniature hobby so i was having to think about what i could do and these are a couple of the ideas let me know if any of these are cool so there was oh i forgot i never ended that poll there was the idea of um my favorite one which was trees in the infinite so Trazen, if you haven't heard of him, he's Necron. He likes to collect things, people, events, objects, and he puts them in stasis fields. And so the first one I was thinking of that sounded pretty cool to my head um, was Trazen standing in the middle of like a, a big open circle with all Necron doodads. And then around the edge, different stasis fields. And in each of those, one of the things that's described in his collection so the warrior in baroque armor the perfect clone of fulgrim 
the croc, the battle between the cash chance and the gene stealers. And I thought that'd be quite cool to make as a diorama. So you get each person to do a different section of the stasis field. All collaborate on it. Uh, and then obviously auction it off for charity. So that was my first idea. Another idea was to have the emperor going through time. So you could have the first scene is him, like, I don't know, dressed in, like, caveman outfit, then him dressed in, like, sort of Bronze Age, then him dressed in, and do that thing through time all the way to Space Marines. So have, like, six little dioramas leading one into the other, and the Emperor sort of evolving through time. Um, then I had uh, the idea of doing, like, just a big battle arena and having one character from all the different games workshops um stuffs or you know any miniature game having a big battle in this arena like as a fight to the death and then final idea was kind of like an infinity end game where they all come through portals and uh you could have armies all charging into a big battlefield what do you think would any of those uh those four ideas work do you think for a cool collaboration or if you've got an idea, let me know, and I'll blatantly steal it. Cal says, some of us have tea, but not often. Coffee is common. Nice. I do enjoy coffee. Although sometimes I do treat the coffee more as medicine. I'm like, right, I need to get through today. I'm going to have a double espresso. Have either of you ever visited um, the UK? It'd be really cool to find out what the uh, the sort of the culture shock was coming that way. <laughs> you, you can be sure right now with the exchange rate, I won't be visiting America for a while. <laughs> Last time I checked, it was one pound to one point zero five dollars. Oof. Although, just while we're talking about conversion rates, one of the dumbest things I've ever done, I wanted to be a millionaire. And at the time, it was either the Japanese yen, or it was one, was it? Yeah, it was Japanese yen, and the exchange rate was something crazy. So I wanted to know, what would it like to hold a million in your hand? And at the time, I think the exchange rate was something ridiculous, like one to like 50,000 or something like that. So I got out a million a million in yen for no reason other than to go, hey, I've got a million. I'll need to see if I can find the photo so I can put it in the Discord. <laughs> and then I immediately exchanged it back in <laughs> and lost a bunch of money. But the lady on the till was very nice. She knew. I explained the dumb thing that I wanted to do. So she only charged me for one way conversion. She didn't charge me to convert it both ways. But that was cool. So I've got a photo holding a million. I was like, yeah. Oh, come on. The end's in sight. End's in sight. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Yes. Yes. Come on. Come on, Sam. You just know that at least one of them is going to be missing, though. It's not going to be quite be 50. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Hmm. Maybe it will be 50. Nice. Well, maybe I've had more than 50 models. Good. That means I have spare for fodder. <laughs> you must sacrifice yourself. For me. I always think of that scene from Return of the Mummy. And there's the priest guy, and uh, there's the little pygmy mummies. He's like, You must sacrifice yourself for me. And they're like, Nope. And run after him, but then the pygmies get them. Oh, more gold. My goodness. What's going on? Okay, okay, so we're only just hitting, uh, unless my phone's showing the wrong time, I'm only just hitting 9 o'clock. That's okay, that's okay. This was probably the longest step. The longest step in terms of uh, me not having to do anything, it obviously will be the drying of the black wash, but I can start on some other models while that's drying. Or I could do the base. 
Hmm. No, because if I do the base and I just splat it straight on, I can use the default color of the, the paste. And that's going to be quicker in the long run. Uh, Kevin says, Stasis Fields is fun, or you paint a couple of minis in an army, paint them, and then send to the next YouTube collaborator, and at the end, there would be a massive army that you could action off. Yeah, that'd work too. I think Miniac did something similar. They did, um, they got a whole bunch of people to paint, and then they auctioned it off via... One of the charities, I don't remember what it's called. It's the one where you can buy raffle tickets for it. I don't know, I like that idea. But, I like the idea of really creating a diorama. Like, something I've never seen before. Like, has anyone ever seen a diorama of Trays in the Infinite with his collection? My problem is, is I listen to an audiobook. Or read a book. And then I desperately want to make or own a miniature of it. For example, I'm currently listening to Kaifus Kane, the Commissar, and I so desperately now <laughs> want a, a model of Kaifus Kane and Jürgen, the Valhallen warrior who's his aide. There's a Russian company, I want to say, RTLW. If you've never checked out RTLW's models, they are very cool. RTLW. You've never seen RTLW's miniatures. They are incredibly cool. And the cool thing is, is he makes all of the all the main characters. So before we got the new Black Library young Eisenhorn model, all we had was to was the 75mm one from the Inquisitor 54. Or Inquisitor 75 or whatever it was called. Does anyone else suffer that? Do you uh, as soon as you listen to an audiobook? You're like, ah, I want that model. The last series I finished was Gotrick and Felix. And I was immediately like, right, you're right. I gotta make a diorama of this. I want a Gotrick versus the dragon or one of the many fights. The Bloodthirster. However, I'm not willing to spend that much money on getting a Bloodthirster just to do a diorama so I can hang it on my wall. Not yet any. Although, speaking of hanging stuff on their walls, did anyone, uh, anyone see the new Artist Opus display cabinet? The, um, not cabinet. I don't know what you would call them. Fauxhammer did a video on it. They're these cool little LED lit up wall mounted shelves. They look really cool. many of these guys to have 50 plus a command squad maybe those look nice but then again when it comes to artist opus i've still got those brushes that i've never opened I can't be the only one who's always worried about um, uh, always worried about having nice gear and then uh, wrecking it. Oh, we've got more lovely miniatures posted in the Discord. We have trolling skeletons. Very nice. Got some work in progress of the Middle Earth stuff. That troll is fantastic. 
I plan on using my miniatures. It seems an absolute shame for the Journeys of Middle Earth stuff to not use them for the actual Lord of the Rings bat strategy battle game. So I'm definitely going to use those. We've got a lovely Swamp Dragon by Cal. Which looks absolutely gross. Have you varnished it? It looks almost sticky. And I mean that in a good way. In a gross, gross good way. Very cool. If you guys have posted this on Instagram, I haven't seen them. If you have Instagram, put your tags in the chat so I can follow you. I did a big follow-a-thon on Instagram uh, a while back. Uh, I did a post and then tried to get everyone that I chat to to um, like that post so I could find them. <clears throat> Which was really handy. I found about 154 people, I think it was. Or just at me on Instagram so I can follow you. That would uh, make my life easy as well. That was when I was at 500 subscribers. Cool thing as well. I am, I am at 3,600 watch hours on YouTube, which is pretty cool. 4,000 to get my little tick. To say I'm an official YouTuber. Which would be pretty cool. We'll see how long that takes. Has anyone tried out the slap chop technique? As they're calling it. I'm sure you've seen it. Basically, you uh, zenithal it. You do a dry brush or white over the top of it to really make the edges pop. Then you use your contrast paints and then a final dry brush. Slap chop. I like it. I like it. I like any movement that moves people away from thinking that they have to spend 400 hours on a model. We've all got that friend who is an absolutely exceptional painter, <laughs> but has not a completed army at all for any game. And you just know it's because of the stress of feeling like they have to make everything perfect. Thirteen people watching. Hello, hello, hello. Do feel free to say hi in the chat and let us know what you're painting. If you're just sitting watching that, go get something. You've got a backlog. I've got a backlog. Build some models. Paint some models. I know you can. That is my plan. Every Wednesday, I am going to keep going until there's none left. And if I can do 50 models in a single night, <laughs> it'll still take me 10 years. <laughs> Fake laugh, real tears. It's not hoarding, it's collecting. It's not hoarding, it's collecting. One video I quite want to make is um, I've got a, a whole bunch of ideas of what I want to do with the random boxes of stuff. Because this is the thing that always um, always drives me crazy about you, the models. When people do videos about their backlogs and they show off their backlog. And they've all got these lovely still in box models and it's all perfect and you could sell them really easily. Mine doesn't look like that. Mine looks like big boxes with tons of models in them. And sometimes broken models, sometimes fixed models. And then also tons of just 
parts. Just random bits. And that's what I want a video. I want to do a video on what to do with that. You know, things like how you can use them in battlefield terrain. How you can use them to create a timeline of the armies that you've owned. How to use them um, as backdrops. You know, that kind of stuff. How to build them into terrain itself. So at some point I'll definitely put a shout out about that. See uh, everyone else's ideas and what the heck you could do with them. Because <laughs> I feel like the best option is just to give the box to someone. And be like, here, this pile of uh, miscellaneous models is now your problem, not mine. But that doesn't really feel like a solution. So if any of you have got some cool ideas about uh, what the heck you can do with those boxes are just random bits do let me know because i don't Woo! first load done ah there you go there's some more there i'll do ah the ASMR. I really liked Mini Eac's video of the ASMR of sounds in our hobby. Although well, the problem is, is now if I try and rush, <laughs> if I try and uh, wash any other brush in here, <laughs> I'm gonna get gold flecks on it. Oh well. Let's have a little look on Discord. Look at those lovely gold boys. So many gold boys. There's a link to the Discord in the chat, so if you manage to get in painted while we're doing this, do feel free to show it off. It's always nice to see inspiration. Right. Black wash. That is not black. It might look black, but that's actually grey. So that's no use. Black wash, please. What is in box number one? Ha! <laughs> Pigment powders. I never use them because I've got cheap ones that I like to use that I got off of eBay. in this box black contrast paint no oh, although they do not have the gun metal in it I will need the gun metal no but it has got a silver that will do and then, where, where is my black wash? Has anyone tried the new recipe of the black washes? I still have my lovely original null oil. I've not had to yet buy the new ones. Oh, that's what I'm going to use for basing. I've got a gigantic pot. When I was around at Mantic the other day, I picked up this Vallejo ground texture. I figured it's a pretty neutral colour, so I'll be able to just use a wash on it to choose whatever colour I want. Ooh, 
is all wet. Big brush. I think that'll probably do. I think any bigger than that, and it's just going to be sarcastic. It's going to be overkill. Do have that one, though. Yeah, I'll use that one. Hello, everyone watching. I have just finished off the gold on all my minis, and I am about to give them a black wash. We're painting them as gold statues, like I did in the recent video. Hello. How many pots of null oil do you think you've ever knocked over in your time? Something I still need to do is um, make my own. There's plenty of people that have done good videos on it. Bedwinter Minis did a good video on it not that long ago. Bell makes things. If you never, uh, sorry, Bell makes stuff. Who again, really nice. I met him and got a cat badge. Hmm. Which is somewhere around here. If you've never seen Bell make stuff, uh, definitely check out his channel. It's very good. He's just someone that enjoys the hobby of just making random stuff. He makes uh, his channel's probably most famous for his bead bots. But that was at the Tabletop Gaming Expo in Manchester. I never knew that so many YouTubers live around Manchester. I would have thought they would have all lived around uh, Nottingham. But quite a few of them live around here, which is pretty awesome. Where's the best place to start a new line? I'll start it here. How long will this black wash take? Oh yeah, 12 past. Can I get them all done by half past? Can I get all of these guys washed? And hopefully by the time that they're all washed, the first one's dry, to do the next gold dry brush. Just to make a pop again. And then we've got the silver and then finally the turquoise. And then if I'm really lucky, I'll have the Base is even done by half ten. Yeah, the inspiration for the video about the four schemes, apart from I hadn't ever seen someone do a video on doing four different paint schemes, was uh, I had a, as always, a Lord of the Ring. well, not as always Lord of the Rings, but I had a tournament, which as always, I'd left doing my models to far too late. I needed them done quick, and I wanted it, some inspiration. So, for the Ring Wraiths, I went for the Fire and Ice. For Gulvier, my proxy... I went for the metal statue because he was holding on to a statue and he has some rules that he blends into the background and I thought that's perfect. Then obviously the barrow whites, ghosts, and then the troll. And for the troll, I just went with stone. Because in things like the Hobbit, which obviously Lord of the Rings strategy battle game includes the Hobbit, your stone... Your uh, trolls turn to stone if they're hit by daylight. So I figured, well, that's perfect. Out of curiosity, um, 
for live streams. Do you get interrupted by ads? I'm not monetized, so I can't turn them off, annoyingly, if you do. So apologies if you have to sit through any ads. I have no control over it whatsoever. I remember finding out, I was absolutely shocked when I found out. So I was like, oh, you know, even if someone doesn't love my videos, at least they haven't had to sit through any ads. And then it turns out, even when you're, when you're not monetized, they put ads on your channel that you can't turn off. When you are monetized, you can at least turn them off. So apologies if you ever have to listen to any ads. Fire on an ad blocker so you can ignore them. I'd also be curious, like, does everyone get shown the ads at the same time? No, 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 it must be about when you started watching. I mainly watch for live streams Twitch. And uh, if it's something on YouTube, I'm lucky enough that my brother pays for a premium account. So I can sneak on there. Probably, I would say, my main form of entertainment. But I wonder what everyone, uh, everyone else does. What is your uh, your main source? So, uh, main source of watching of videos. What do we have? We have what we have. YouTube, Twitch. I guess Netflix, uh, Amazon, Amazon Video. Let's see who wins. What have you watched the most? Can I vote in my own poll? I can't vote in my own poll. Boo. Well, I'd vote for YouTube. It's definitely what I watch the most of. As soon as I come home, right? Who's put out a new video? friend just messaged me he's uh only just finished fitting his uh washing machine well done there you go hopefully you've uh, got that link and you can join us And uh, if you're not part of the Discord, feel free to jump on. People have been posting cool stuff they've been painting as we've been working along. And if you guys are on Instagram, please pop in the chat. If I don't already follow you, let me know so I can see. Because I like seeing people getting tons of stuff done. Not, not a single model. Don't get me wrong. I still like seeing all these golden demon winners. What I really want to see is people painting their entire armies. There's a, a friend of mine called uh, Richard Stockdale, and he is a machine. The guy can put out a full Kings of War army in a single week. Like, while still working, like, it's not his job or anything like that. He just manages to get so much done. friend Chris has been sending me loads of updates he's been powering through he's got his uh, his Lord of the Rings tournament at the weekend it's one of those ones I used to have tons of Lord of the Rings models and then uh, when I moved nobody played it and now they're into it 
which is why you shouldn't sell your models. Because inevitably what happens is wherever you live, they want to play that model. One of the games I uh, want to put more time in into is Titanicus. I absolutely loved Titanicus back in the day. So when it got re-released, I was like, oh, I'm having that. So I've got one of the uh, the big bad boys, what are they called? They're called Imperators. The one uh, bigger than the Warlord one that they released. Nemesis? Is it called Nemesis? But I've got one of uh, those, and the poor thing is just a skeleton at the moment. Because all of its little armour panels are just sitting off, ready to be painted. Because I was like, oh, I'm going to airbrush this. And then my airbrush broke. And I kind of went in a huff because I'd had to buy another airbrush after my first one broke. I basically need to stick the entire thing in a pot of, was it isopropyl alcohol? And just let it soak. Because I think the problem is is the it's the Sparmax. So if anyone has a Sparmax and you've got advice, please do let me know. But I you can't take it apart as much as I've seen other um, airbrushes, it seems. So there's a little bit inside that every time you use your airbrush when you're removing your needle, it stocks up just that little bit of paint. And I think it's become almost fully blocked at this point, annoyingly. Encoding overloaded, consider turning down video. The encoding's overloaded. I don't know what that means, OBS. If the stream has stopped, do let me know. Oh wait, hang on a minute. If the stream has stopped, how would you even be hearing this? Has it got a massive lag? I don't know what encoding overloaded means. So if it's gone weird, let me know. Oh, am I going to get these uh, all washed by half past? Ah, no. <laughs> how, how has it been that long since I just started these bad boys? Oh, come on. Pick up the pace, Sam. You're taking too much time. You're being too, too fussy about it. This is a, a random black wash. The whole point of it is to be fast. Come on. You've got to get all 50 of these bad boys done. Got to prove that this is a speed technique. To be fair, I think I, even if I managed, and managed half of them in uh, two hours, I think that's still a good time to get 25 models done. Jeez, for our American viewers, it must be about 1.30 in the morning now. I guess it even depends on which coast you're on. Jeez. Oh, hang on a minute. When you said 12 earlier, did you mean AM or PM? America's behind. Here I thought you were hardcore. It's the middle of the day for you guys. <clears throat> I was winding um, uh, Sergei up um, today because I was trying desperately to try and get the... Uh, the last of the video edited so I could get the video up for today. So I was doing a little bit of sneakiness at work. But unfortunately he's an engineer so he doesn't have that privilege of sitting in a nice comfy office. So he was like, you get. He's got another awesome video in the works. <laughs> and apparently uh, <laughs> after his video released, the, um, uh, the young lady sculptor, who did the $15 model has been absolutely inundated with requests. So she's had to stop taking some and she's whapped her prices up. So you won't be able to get her services anymore for just 15. She's now charging, <laughs> probably, you know, 
I would say probably closer to what she's worth rather than uh, she was probably underselling herself a little bit there before. But hello, folks, if you are watching, do feel free to post in the Discord. Let us know what you're up to. Let us know what you're working on. We're always looking to see it. It's always good to see people getting stuff done. I myself am painting a whole bunch of Robin legionaries from the early Republic. And these are going to be my auxiliaries. And I don't know what the Vetric models are going to be used for, but when they are, I will have a fully painted army. There's a YouTuber I watch called Johnny Chiodini. He um, is probably of uh, Oxventurous fame. He's the DM for the Oxbox and Oxtra. And he did... He did a stream about a game where you go back in time to the Romans. It was basically a really successful mod on Skyrim. And it's like a murder mystery. And if you if you do something wrong, if someone gets killed, the all the statues around uh, of Artemis, the Huntress God, come alive and then kill everyone in the settlement. Um, and basically, it was such a popular mod that they then made it into their own game, which was very cool. But in that, there's loads and loads of Roman statues uh, in gold. This is definitely reminding me of that. Yikes, am I even halfway? Come on. Come on, man. You know, if you're a fan of the Roman stuff, I can thoroughly recommend checking out the Macro and Cato books. Under the Eagle, you can get it on Audible. You can get physical copies. Simon Scarrow. Under the Eagle. Very good. I really like that kind of style of book. Um, I don't know what you'd call it. Mockumentary? Mock history? So it's real history, so real events. Um, but the characters are kind of made up and the blanks are all filled in. And it just makes for some really good reading. You know that something's been particularly successful when you realise that you've uh, learned something, even though you were using it for entertainment. You're like, oh darn it, you tricked me. You tricked me into learning something. Biggest thing I'm worried about these guys is if the black has decided to all pull at the bottom of the shield. I do wonder how that's going to turn out. I guess I could put like weathering powder or something at the bottom. Because whenever they thrust it into the ground it will get really dirty. Maybe that can explain it. I'm not looking forward to when I do the actual uh, full the legendaries from the later part. The Vitrix ones. Uh, because <laughs> I really don't want to have to freehand the shields. That would be excruciating. I'd also like to get some really good Highlander models. That'd be nice. I had some that were they were for Guild Ball, the Brewers. They were really nice. But I want some uh, you know, some big Highlanders. And I know that oh, what's it called? Is it called Conquest? I want to say it's a vaguely new game or they just recently had their second edition. But they have undead Romans. So it's all like skeletons, but in like Roman armor. And I 
think they also have a Highlander faction. I think... I think Mantix, Kings of War and Vanguard might have... But it's not quite what I was sort of thinking. But they might have one. Basically, if you've ever watched the uh, Disney movie Brave, that's what I want. I want all the different clans. Clan MacGuffin! Clan Dingwald! There's a scene where they all get in a massive scruff. And that was, again, one of those moments, you know, when you uh, you watch it and you're like, yep. I want some of those models. But that's why we have massive backlogs. But not after tonight. When we were chatting in the podcast, one of the major ones that uh, Matt was pointing out was uh, when you have models that you've had for ages... You've lied to yourself that you're planning on painting. You keep putting it off. This army is definitely that. The uh, unbuilt Vitrix models that haven't done anything. You know. And these models were even worse than those ones because these models are fine. Uh, they don't really do it for me. But I need some auxilia for the Vitrix stuff. And this was just such a good deal. Like I said, it was like 30 quid for the uh, the 50 odd models. And I was like, you know what? I'm having that. But these have moved. They didn't move country because I did, uh, I'd already lived in England by the time I got these. But they're definitely... Definitely more than I need. Kevin says, the massive scruff is like every Christmas and New Year at my parents' house. <laughs> My parents have Irish wolfhounds, so yes, I agree with you. Not to live up to uh, stereotypes or anything like that, but the big dogs running around. Yep, that's normal. Although for any uh, non-Scots, no, we don't have haggis instead of uh, turkey. We still have a turkey. There's just normally more alcohol involved oh my goodness batch painting in 50 not a good idea it's still not the biggest batch paint I've ever done the biggest patch paint I've ever done was either a hundred odd um, termagants and hormigants for Behemoth High Fleet to the blues and the reds or it was Night Goblins because I had a lot of Night Goblins and I basically just sat there and batch painted them. My friend did a similar thing and he had this really cool colour scheme. He had yellow um, and you know what? It looked great. It was like a dirty yellow that he had on his Night Goblins Rather than like a bright, bright yellow. And it was just really cool. I guess I should probably change the thumbnail on this. It turned out not to be an army of ghosts, but an army of Ottomans. Ottomans? Yeah, you know what? That's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to change the thumbnail to a picture of me glaring at a whole bunch of Ottomans. Automatons. That's one good thing about having friends that watch your YouTube video. The second you publish your YouTube video and you say something dumb, they immediately message you and call you out on whatever mispronunciation you've done. We have Haggis like a month later on Rabbi Burns Night. Of course, Ode to the Haggis. Chieftain, or if you go by the original, Fura of the Puden Race.
Well, then again, I don't know about you, but I always get owed to the haggis and uh, the one about the mouse confused. Quick and cure and timorous beastie, all oh, what a panics in thy breastie, all oh, the was a hasty, you curing beast. Now, do I dare go get it with paint covered hands? Oh, I kind of want to show you, but at the same time, I don't want to get paint on it. I've got this gorgeous print that my parents uh, brought down, which is um, Tamashanta. Um, and it's been based on an actual oil painting that they have on their wall. And it's very cool. When I finish the black wash, maybe to finish off the stream, I'll go get it. Running out of battery in my phone. Modern phones. Absolutely useless. It's the Google Pixel 4 and they've just announced the Google Pixel 7. I was like, oh. Do I really want to go into contract again? The contracts are just ridiculous. My wife's phone crack contract is something stupid. Like the, the phone gets paid off after two years, but then the contract's for like another year. Well, why? Why do they need to be so long? It's as long as a mortgage at this point. Oh, I can already think. I'm just already thinking about this. I'm like, oh, these are going to look so good with the verdigris on them. I mean, if I was to proxy these in Age of Sigmar, how many points would 50 models be? I guess it depends what you're running them as. If I run them as Sons of Behemoth, <laughs> that'd be one or two models. That's another model that I'm just like, resist. You do not need the new Sons of Behemoth because they've just released um, King Braun? Nope. I can't remember. They basically released a King Giant. I'm like, oh, that's cool. The thing is, though, I painted my... Um, I painted my Sons of Behemoth with the airbrush. So I just know I'm not going to be able to colour match them. Which is going to make me sad. Because then I've got some models that just aren't going to match the rest of them. Welcome back, Hal. Superb. Keep painting. Keep doing it. It's halfway through the week. Perfect time to get some models done. Hopefully everyone else watching as well is hammering some away. Or I guess just de-stressing. It definitely has been something that I have found sorely lacking in the last six months. When you don't put the time aside for your hobby, it's brutal. It's also just nice doing something that's really mindless. Like this is a really easy paint job. There is absolutely no thinking. I think that's why it's so important. I did a video, I think it was my very first video, where I was talking about like different techniques to get your miniatures done. And so many people laughed and they're like, you make a plan when you're doing lots of miniatures? You, like you write down what you're going to do? Yes. Yes, I do. Because then you're not umming and eyeing about what colors to use, what steps you need to do. You just 
get doing it and just hammer through it. Oh, he's got no sword. Oh, dear. Have we hit the half past yet? Am I going to manage to get the all of these uh, with a black wash done before half past? We're not finishing at half past. I just wanted to uh, wanted to get the wash done by half past. That was my uh, my hope. So if I managed to get that done by half past, that means this wash took uh, thirty minutes, or more like twenty one minutes, something like that. Which means that hopefully the verdigris wash should take less. And then it's just the dry brush of silver. Which I might get this done by half past ten. That is that is hashtag goals. So that means we will have been doing three hours and I'll have done fifty models. Put the bets in now. What do we think? Will I manage it? Will I manage to get fifty models done in three hours? Although, I feel like it's almost like two hours and a half because I didn't do much in the first half hour. I was just making sure that everything was working. Let's see. Let's, let's, let's put a little poll on for that. Will I manage to get... He says, wasting time. Well, I manage... Whoops. Will I manage 50 models? 50 models... In three hours. Yes, no, can you repeat the question? You're not the boss of me now. I'm going to say not including basing because there's no way that I'll get basing done as well. I need an alternative for when it comes to fantasy. The tarmac, I absolutely love. Um, using that for 40k. I was able to do all of my orcs just so unbelievably quickly. Just break the cork, fire on a, a black spray paint, dust with white, put down uh, two bits of paper with a cut slit in them, take a sponge, sponge on the white line for the, um, for the road, and uh, job done. And then you realise that using that technique, you then immediately cover up the whole road and nobody ever gets to see it. But that doesn't change the fact that it was the fastest basing for an army I've ever done. Fifty models, three hours. Not including the base. Oh no. Oh no, people are saying no. I will prove you wrong. Is it half past? Oh, oh bugger, it's not half past, it's quarter two. No, <laughs> but, but those are the two biggest sections of this paint job done. Uh, once this is done, because I've done the gold, I've done the black wash. Ah, no, this is going to take me until uh, till 10 o'clock. Oh, no. I can't remember, Kevin, was it you with the undead army? I'm trying to remember who, who had the undead army. No, I think it was, was it someone else. It's in here. Is it Steve with the undead army? Uh, not sure if it's just me. The stream rate has gone very choppy. Let's see. How can I improve that? Let's close down some tabs. Close down that. And 
how about that has that made it any better has that made any difference is that how encoding works if i close down a whole bunch of things on my computer does that stop it or is this sabotage are you telling me this just so i uh, slow down and mode my uh, painting let me see if i can't boost the signal um not me i do have some army of the dead painted but never played any lord of the rings strategy battle game that's a shame it's a really good game i want to make a tutorial on how to do it later um Coding overloaded. Let me know if that has got any better. <laughs> Please do make a tutorial. I'm lazy and I'd rather watch rules and read them. Fair. Absolutely fair. Um, it's actually a very easy game uh, once you've learned the basics. Your heroes have heroics. Those heroics can be things like enhancing a spell, doing a longer move, doing a collective charge to move them together. And those happen in the movement phase or in the combat phase if you want to do a heroic combat. In a heroic combat, if you win, then you get to move and go and fight in another combat. Um, there's, you can't keep chaining it though. Um, your individual guys have got pretty much standard movement. Normally it's six for your sort of standard guys. Um, for your horses, it's, I want to say, 10 or 12. And then there's exceptions like flyers, which have a further movement. You cannot move within an inch of someone that you want to charge unless that person is already in combat. If that person's already in combat, you can just walk straight past them or charge straight past them. Charging doesn't have the same rules as other games because it basically is just a special type of move. And it's if you end in basic base contact, you could do that. When it comes to fighting, uh, you take however many attack dice you do and roll off. Whoever has the highest dice roll wins and then can fight. If, however, you get a draw, the person with the highest fight value wins the combat and they get to fight. All the losers get pushed backwards. If there's not enough space to move them backwards, they're considered trapped, in which case you get to roll double dice against damaging them. Oh, something's moved. What is this black line? What is th that cable? No. Or has that black line always been there? Was oh, so my computer's moved? Or, nope, this is moved. How did this move? I didn't touch this. Oh, I moved it like that. Oops. Right, there we go. Um, so yes, so you can uh, move them backwards. Then you roll against your strength against the defense. Um, if you beat it, you do a wound. If you do more damage than their wounds, they're dead. Um, magic works off of willpower and basically to keep your heroes all in track those special abilities there's only so much basically times that they can do that in a battle might allows them to perform heroic actions and improve things like their defense or rolls um, willpower allows them to resist and cast magic spells and fate is basically like a ward save 
Again, you've got a limited number of each of those. So once you've used them up, that's it. You're out. So chieftains have a little bit and then heroes have special ones. Uh, like I said, it appears to have made a difference on this end, but if it hasn't made a difference, if it's still choppy, do let me know. Can I change my frame rate output? Um, hmm. Okay, so I can probably change my frame rate. However, we might lose connection. So I'm going to give it a shot because if it's buffering really badly, it might be worth a shot. So give me just one second. I'm going to try and 